Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Part one of our Pimax Crystal Review, coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. Before we jump into the Pimax Review, there are a couple things that I need to go over first. Now the first disclaimer is Pimax did send me this headset for review, but that is not gonna sway any of my opinions about this headset. I did make sure that they agreed to that before they sent this to me, so they gave me the go ahead, so you're gonna see everything first, just as I get to do so. Secondly, there is an affiliate link down below in the description. If you do decide to pick up one of these headsets, it doesn't cost anything extra to you, but it does give us a little bit of a commission to keep the channel going. I wanna take this review on a little bit different direction than you may have seen from other YouTubers out there. And that is, I really don't want to give any opinions about the headset, the software, the setup, or the clarity. The one thing that I may need to give you opinions on is how the headset actually feels on my head. One thing that I will be doing to make that a little bit more tangible for you is that I will be measuring my head specs so that this way you can kind of compare your head against what my specs are and this might give you a general representation as maybe as how it's gonna fit or feel on your head. Now you may notice that I have two other headsets on the table and no, this is not a review on those headsets, but the sole purpose of those being here is that I can compare a little bit from each of these headsets to the Pimax Crystal. Now, if you're coming from the G2, obviously you wanna have better clarity. If you're coming from the Vario, well, maybe you want a better audio solution and maybe you want a wider FOV. If there is anything that you want me to show you during the entirety of this series, please let me know down below in the comments section. And if you like today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Also, just a heads up here, I did not open this at all, so I don't know what is in here. This is gonna be a first for all of us, so let's unbox. So what I think I'm gonna do is start setting everything out on the table, and then we can get rid of this box so we'll have a little bit more room. Well, uh, I was half right. It is a battery, and it looks like the external charger that they give you for it. And this looks like this is the other battery that they give you with it. Yes, that is. Set those together. The other thing to note on the bottom of the charger there is a USB-C port for charging. Looks like this may be another facial interface gasket. Yep, it is a facial interface gasket. It looks like it has the soft Velcro on the back. But it looks like on this particular gasket, they do have the cuts inside of here for if you're a glasses wearer. Oh, and by the way, if you are a glasses wearer, I do recommend to get the inserts for these lenses. I also have an affiliate link down below in the description for VR Rock lenses, where you can get 10% off of that. Okay, so we'll say this is the first time I've ever seen controllers packaged this way. Also, if we take a look at the bottom of these controllers, these also charge by USB-C port. Let's see how, okay. They came apart fairly easy. Looks like we have two boxes here in the front. I'm not sure what that is, so let's pull those out real quick and see what we have in there. All right, uh, yep, looks like we have a couple cables here. So this is gonna be USB-C, and this is also a USB-C cable. Yeah, don't make these boxes easy to get out. See, if you take a look at the way these are jammed in here, it's, they don't give you a finger opening anywhere to try to, to get it out. All right, so let's see what's in here. Always be careful opening this stuff because it could be something delicate or fragile and you don't want to break it. Delicate or fragile. A little Phillips head screwdriver. This looks like a microfiber cloth to wipe the lenses. What's this? 
All right, so this looks like to be that uh, USB hub that everyone's talking about. Oh, that wasn't good. Screws just fell out. Look at that. Okay, yep, we have a couple things here at the bottom, so let's take a look here. So it looks like we have a Pimax Crystal Quick Start Guide. We'll take a little more of an in-depth look at that once we get into section number two or part two, uh, when we're gonna set up all the software for the Pimax. And we have another big box down here at the bottom. Now, one thing uh, to note here that the box that holds some more goodies, I haven't opened it yet, but as you can see, it doesn't even close all the way. Now that could affect some things if you have something really pointy here and this were to hit something on shipment, it's not gonna be even weight distribution once this comes down and it could damage something depending on what's in here. Just something to note. All right, so it looks like we have our Pimax cable. Oh, one other note. We are here in the US, so they do give you many, many different adapters for your neck of the woods. Okay, here is the cable that we're gonna need for the little USB hub here. And I believe what this is for is to plug into the headset while you are uh, gaming to help put some power inside of the battery. Here's the new USB power hub designed to extend the battery life of the Pimax crystal. It gets energy through a dedicated AC adapter instead of drawing power from a motherboard. Now we extend the battery life to between six to eight hours. Let's show you how to set it up. First, choose your plug for the AC adapter. Then insert the USB plugs at the end of your DP cable into the hub. The fiber optic cable has only one USB plug, the copper cable has two. Just add all these USB plugs into the USB hub, regardless of your cable. Then connect the micro B USB cable to the HUB. Finally, connect the AC adapter plug into the HUB. Then plug the AC adapter into an electrical outlet. You should see a blue LED light up on the corner of the HUB. Then plug the other end of the micro B USB cable, the normal USB, into your computer. Then add the display port cable to your GPU. Now connect the cable to your crystal. Ready to go. When you have this plugged into the headset, they've gotten up to 10 hours of gameplay. I don't know if that's possible or not, but that is just what has been reported so far. Oh, it looks like we got a little rubber strap here. Last but not least, let's sit this bag. So this is going to be your charger. Now, what is quite interesting is that they did give me this Phillips head screwdriver, which I was unsure of. And we've got all of these extra screws that they gave us. Yep, it looks like the screws are actually for the lenses. So I know Pimax said that they are coming out with other lenses. The next thing that I want to do in this review is to weigh the Pimax with the battery installed. And we're going to compare that to the weight of the G2 as well as the Vario Arrow. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now we're gonna set everything up to be measured in grams so that we can be as specific as we possibly can. So if we take the G2, the G2 is approximately 632 grams. The Vario Arrow looks like it's uh, 749 grams. And I'm gonna throw a battery in the Pimax real quick. Oh. Ooh. All right, so now let's weigh the Pimax. All right, I'm not sure if you can see that, but the Pimax weighs 1,000. 151 grams. So just to put that in perspective, the Pimax weighs almost twice the weight of the Reverb G2. The next thing I want to do is compare the size difference of the Pimax headset from the other two options that I have here on the table. Now again, I know a lot of you are going to be coming from the Reverb G2, so there you go. 
I hope that gives you a little bit of insight about the difference in size of the Pimax. From those of you coming from the Vario, The next thing I want to take a look at is the cable management on the headset itself. On the crystal, it looks like they have put this external HDMI port thingy here. Now I can tell you on previous headsets, because I did have the 8KX, their cable management was a little bit something to be desired. And for anybody that owned that headset or does own those headsets, you know what I'm talking about. So it looks like they have their main cable going inside of your headset here, which you do not remove. And we're gonna connect the HDMI that they give us into this port here. Now, another thing to note here is that you don't see all of the wires running from the DMAS speakers like you did on the previous headsets. I do also like the padding that they have here on the sides. The other thing that I'm gonna to have to give you my opinion on is the quality of plastics that are used in the making of this headset. So I would say the plastic that is used to make this headset is probably on par with the HP Reverb G2. Uh, you do feel a couple spots. It's hard to get this on camera. I hope it can pick this up. Let's see if I can get it this way. As you can see, see how it can push in here. And it's only on the front, the top, you don't really see that or the sides or the bottom. It's just this front here. Now, if we take a look at the reverb, and it doesn't flex at all. So take it for what it is. If you have this headset, be careful, don't drop it. Now, it's funny because I'm trying to read the quick start guide here about some of the buttons and what they actually do. And I would have assumed that I would have been able to find that information in the quick start guide. And one thing that I did note here is when they were talking about the battery installation, they want you to hold the two tabs before you press it in. And that's something that I did not do. I just pressed it in. The only thing that they talk about here on this is a hot swap of the battery and the standalone button that is on the inside of the headset. Right here, we have a little standalone button. So once the standalone option becomes available, we can just flip this to the AIO and that will be the standalone. The PC will be, of course, for your PC VR. Now, one thing I will note about the button layout here is I know when I take my headset that I have now on and off, I tend to like to grab it from the sides. There's no buttons underneath of here. so you're not gonna be hitting these with your thumbs, but there is a possibility that you might hit one of these on top because they added this little chamfer here on the side will allow you to know in real time, in real space, where your fingers are, so you're not gonna accidentally hit them. Another thing that we'll take a look at here is that the Pimax Crystal has inside out tracking. So that means we're not gonna be using base stations like you would with the Valve Index or, you know, the Vario Aero. If we take a look at the cameras on this headset, the one thing that stands out to me is that the lower cameras are in the very center. So I'm not sure how that's gonna play out if you're going down real low with your controller and kind of way out to the side. Another thing that really makes these headsets comfortable on your head, not to mention be able to keep you in that sweet spot is the balance of the headset on top of your noggin. <laughs> so let's take a look at that real quick. If I grab the crystal by the strap and just pick up straight in the middle, as you can see, it is pretty balanced, but it kind of, if I do this, it's wanting to sway more towards the front. So it is a little bit front heavy still, even though we have that battery. Keeping that as reference, let's take a look at the Reverb G2. Now granted, it is half the weight of the Pimax, but let's just take a look at this. Look at that. So as you can see, the G2 is not weighted properly at all, but what I can say is the G2 is one of the most comfortable headsets I've put on my head ever. So, 
that's something to be said about that. Now let's move over to this side of the table and take a look at the Vario. So now as you can see with the Vario, with the way the head strap is here, it tries to very well balance itself out. Now I know it's still gonna be front heavy because there's nothing in the back here, all the weights on the front. So yes, it is still front heavy. Now the next thing that I would like to touch on, and this also relates to the comfort of the headset itself, is the padding material and thickness of that padding material that's used for the headset. By feel of the padding, again, this isn't something that's gonna be easily shown to you, but the feel of this padding is almost like neoprene. So if you've ever had neoprene like muck boots for in the mud, or if you're a scuba diver and you've felt your wetsuit. So let's take a look at the facial interface here and see what this is all about. Now, remember this is Velcroed on. So if we take a look at this, it does have like a hook and loop system. So it's not your typical Velcro. I do want to take a look at how this is actually attached to the facial interface. Now on this one, this seems like it is sewn into the facial interface, this soft material. On this one, this almost looks like you can see the soft material behind, and this is a harder plastic that is glued. Looks like glue to me. So now with that, let's go ahead and get my caliper out and we're gonna measure all of the padding that is on the headset itself. Now also for reference, I'm gonna be measuring everything in millimeters. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. So it also looks like this side padding here is held on by the same hook and loop system, but it does not have that hard plastic behind it. Oh, oh, I see, okay. I think the reason why they needed to do the hard plastic is so that they can keep the top part of this facial interface in its own form. If this plastic wasn't attached to the facial interface, this top piece is going to flop around and it's not going to conform to your head properly. So it looks like the side padding that is on each side across your ears, that is going to be about five millimeters thick. Now one thing that I would have liked to have seen is this back padding a little bit thicker and it's going to be hard for me to show you but it looks like our back padding is only about five and a half millimeters thick that goes on the back of your head. You might say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't really sound like a lot. And no, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you go to even something like the Vario, there is no padding in here. It almost acts like an outdoor lounge chair where you have support all the way around. And then in the center, it has movement to press in and out to give you a more conforming support. Now let's also compare that to the G2. Padding on the G2, if you already have it, you know you can't really take it off. And yeah, you can sweat in this stuff too. And when you sweat in this, it stays wet. But the thing here is the G2 is actually 12.7 millimeters thick. That is a significant difference in the thickness of padding on the G2 compared to the Pimax, and the Vario. Now we also have this bit of padding back here. I'm not really sure what this is going to hit because if my head is on here, this is behind this piece of padding. I don't know if you can see that well, but these side pieces are literally behind the main piece of padding that hits your head. So I don't know anybody's head that kind of jolts out on each back side so I don't know how that's going to be but just to let you know how thick that padding is 16.3 millimeters thick on the top of the headset we do have another port here it has a cover over it so I'm not going to open yeah let's open it okay so on the top of the headset we have another port here um, really not sure that looks like a HDMI port a mini HDMI or something so um, maybe that's for future development. I'm not too sure, but they have a cover on it. So it's probably not something you're gonna be taking on and off. Let's move on to the side of the headset and take a look at the DMAS speakers uh, that you can opt to purchase for the Crystal. 
Again, this unit was sent to me with everything on it, so I'm not too sure of any of the pricing on that. I will have all that information in the link below in the description, so check that out. Now, it looks like the speakers are adjustable on the side. They have some adjustability. You have approximately 11 millimeters of travel. That's not a lot of travel, but at least they do give you some ability to customize that a little bit. The speakers do not flex the yaw axis, I guess. And they also move forward and backward. And that's also a benefit to having uh, an off-ear speaker like the DMAS speakers, is that you have a lot of situational awareness that is you know, in your room that you can't physically see what's around you. And that leads me over here to the Vario. And this is what they give you for the Vario. There really is no perfect headset out there yet that I have seen that gives you everything that you want there's always something missing. So maybe Pimax has changed that for me and maybe we'll have all of that in this headset. Time will tell. The next thing that I wanna take a look at are the lenses inside of the Pimax. And we're gonna to try to compare these lenses as best we can with the lenses in the Reverb and the lenses in the Vario. So let's take a look at those real quick. So at first glance, coming from an 8KX, these lenses are much, much smaller. Let's take a look at these lenses real quick. So as you can see, we do have a little bit of movement in the lenses. Now, for those of you who have never had a VR headset, that is quite common for the lenses to move. So if we take a look at the Reverb G2 lenses, and you might even be able to hear that. Now we're also gonna take a look at the Vario Aero. Again, I think you might be able to hear it. So as you can see, all of the lenses move in all of the headsets. And I would say that the amount of movement that we get in the Pimax Crystal is about on par with the Vario Aero. We're gonna to try to take a general idea of lens size. We're about 50 millimeters wide on the lens inside of the crystal. Again, do not do this at home because you can very well scratch your lenses. The Vario Aero is about 46 millimeters. And also, I'm measuring this on a diagonal, so from the point of each lens to the round of the other side. And the HP Reverb is about 47 millimeters as for the lens size. So I think the Pimax Crystal is going to be bigger as far as the lenses than either of these two options that are available. So that's something nice to see. Now. How that's gonna to relate to FOV, well, that's gonna be something that we're gonna test out. The next thing I wanna take a look at is the cabling for the headset. From what I understand, Pimax is sending these from the factory with a fiber optic cable. But what I wanna do is take some measurements on the thickness of this cable compared to the Reverb G2 and the Vario Aero. The cable on the Pimax Crystal is 5.6 millimeters. The cable on the Reverb G2 is six millimeters. On the Vario, we're at 5.14. Taking a look at this cable, the one thing that some people may have issues with here is that you need two USB outlets on your PC that is not being used, but more importantly, you need at least a 2.0 USB available. Let's go over some of the adjustments that are available on the Pimax headset. Because adjustments, of course, equal comfort. So if we can't adjust this properly, it's gonna be hit or miss whether it's gonna be comfortable for you. On the back of the headset, it looks like we have a nice little dial here, and it is notched, which I like that to keep it in place. The top strap here, this is a solid rubber strap, 
This doesn't look like it's adjustable at all. So you cannot adjust this. The only one that you can adjust is this very, very flexible Velcro strap underneath. I think one thing that would probably help is if this was a solid material here and wasn't stretchy, then we could adjust Velcro on that and that would probably be much, much better. So before we get into putting this thing on and trying out the comfort level of the Pimax, let's take a look at the controllers that they give us with this headset. The controllers themselves are probably something that you're going to be familiar with. These controllers are very close to the Oculus Quest controllers. I've never had an Oculus Quest, so I really can't uh, comment on that. So that might make it easier for you to get the hang of these controllers because they're so familiar. Joystick feels nice. It doesn't feel too tight. It does have a button press in the center of the joystick. So if I try to compare that to, say, the Reverb. Now with the Reverb G2, you can clearly see that these controllers are enormous. And that was one of the things I didn't like about these controllers. They are just so darn big. Look, I can fit this one inside. Um, but, you know, the tracking on the G2 works pretty good. The buttons feel completely different on this G2 compared to the Pimax. Now, what I mean is if we take a look at the button itself, I'm going to press it in. And that's pressed in. That's it. Very short throw on that button. We take a look at the crystal. As you can see there, that's a couple millimeter throw on that button. You also don't have the audible click like you do. So again, that might be something that you like, something that you dislike. But all in all, it does feel pretty comfortable, and the ergonomics feel pretty good on this controller. Now, let's go ahead and measure the handle of the uh, controllers themselves. 29 millimeters in this direction, 42 millimeters in this direction. So if you take a look at it this way, it is kind of thin uh, when you're going to be holding this. Now, I have smaller hands. I don't have one of the uh, really flexible tape measures. But what I want to do is measure, so my hand is about, about 10 inches or so. So if you have bigger hands than me, then these might feel a little, a little thin. Now let's go ahead and measure the uh, reverb. So we have 40 millimeters on this axis. And we have 31 millimeters side to side. So what that tells you is width-wise is going to be a little bit thicker than these. It's, I guess, very similar in comparison to the G2. One thing that you will notice is that this has a shine on it and the G2 doesn't. It's a matte finish. Other than that, I think that the controllers are pretty comparable. So now let's go ahead and weigh both of these so you get an idea on how much and how heavy this is going to be in the hand. Pimax Crystal controllers have an internal rechargeable battery. So I think that in itself will make these a little bit lighter. We're about 130 grams on the Pimax, and we're 178 grams on the Reverb. You know, you're talking about almost a 50 gram difference between the weight of each of those. Now, just for comparison, for those of you who do have the Valve Index controllers, let's weigh that real quick. The Valve Index controller is 195 grams. So it's even heavier than the Reverb G2 by about 25 grams heavier than the Reverb. So the next thing what I would like to do is take a look at the batteries that they give us for the Pimax and let's see the ease of access of the battery. Now, keep in mind, this looks like the exact same thing that is on the back side of the Pimax. So they really didn't give us any different charging dock. It would have been really nice to have 
something we could just slide it in. Because this is exactly what comes on the back of the headset, we'll get a good idea on how hard or easy it is to get the battery out. Now I know they say to press on each of these tabs. I think that's the easiest way to get it out. Now I've seen a lot of people try to go like this and push, push in. And the problem with these tabs is that they don't actually push straight in. So if you try to put pressure right in the center of this tab, the whole button itself doesn't press in. Watch. You see what pressed in? The part that actually presses in is the part closest to the um, battery separation area. So it's very difficult to get your finger in here and try to put most of your pressure right there. So if I just go like this, it popped out, it popped out, there you go. So that's why you have to press on the very front side of this to actually get the disconnect here. If you press back here, this is where it's hinged. This is the hinge point for it. So if you press there, you got nothing, nothing. So putting it back in, we're able to get our thumbs in here and our finger on the other side a little bit further. And you don't have to press hard now because you're able to get the right pressure point on that button. It's in. So I hope that'll help some people out out there when you're getting those batteries in. So now I think I've gone over just about everything I can think of on this particular headset regarding the hardware factor. If you have any suggestions or any questions about anything, please let me know down in the comments section and I will try to answer that in the next following video. But for now, let's get into the comfort factor of when we put this headset on my head. And again, I'm going to put some of my head specs over here or over here. For now, I'm going to take off my headset and let's try this thing on. For the first time putting on your Pimax Crystal, you want to make sure that you loosen the screw on the back of the headset to loosen up the headband as much as possible to give you as much room when putting on your headset. Now you may also need to remove the headset and adjust the top strap. You want to make sure that you adjust the top strap so that you don't have all that weight pushing down on the front of your face. One thing I found on the headset, as I'll show you here in a second, is that I do have a lot of light leakage on the side, but more importantly, because of the light leakage, that means that I don't have even pressure on the face gasket all around my head. Now that creates some pressure points, and I will say it's not the most comfortable headset, but it is not the worst headset I've ever put on either. But for now, let's listen to what I have to say about the headset. So I, I do get a lot of light leakage there on the sides. Uh, let me see if I can show you this. It's kind of hard because I can't see where the camera is. But right here you can also see that it's not actually touching my head at all. Um, and then if we go on top, you'll see my bald head. But <laughs> you'll, uh, you can probably see that I have open gaps right here on each side. I can fit my entire finger in this sides of the headset. One of the, the reasons why you don't want light leakage, especially with a inside out tracking, is because you have to have your lights on in the room. At least if I had base station tracking, then I can turn all of my lights out and I won't have that problem of glare coming inside of the headset. But we don't have that option available, so we can't test that. But again, that's why I'm doing this review for everyone, so that you don't make a mistake either purchasing it or make a mistake not purchasing it because you were too worried about if it's going to be right for you or not. And, and that's the, the goal of this series, is to really bring everything that I can to you, and then you can make that educated decision whether this is going to be the purchase for you or maybe you should give it a pass. Well, in any case, that's going to wrap us up for today, folks. 
If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. I hope part one I was able to answer some questions about the hardware on this unit and also give you some comparisons between the lower end units that are in the marketplace, the reverb, and the higher end units that are in the marketplace, the Vario. If you like today's content, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. And to all my flight zipper friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you'd like to see part two of the video, click up here if it's available.